I hate spending money on video games, not because I'm broke, but because when presented with the option to buy a $60 game or $60 worth of food, I'm gonna eat it. As the ultimate min-maxer, I'm gonna make sure I pay the least amount for the most amount of value possible. This very concept is why most of the games I've purchased on Steam are under $20. But you know, finding good games for cheap can sometimes be very hard. But my experience as a mobile gamer has really given me this ability to just discern trash from a genuinely good game. Whether it be during Steam sales or browsing the $10 and unders tab on Steam, I'm always looking for cheap games to sink countless hours into. Due to the games I played growing up, I tend to have a major bias towards 2D or pixelated games, which luckily for me, end up being on the cheaper side of the spectrum. Sometimes I find a game so good and so cheap that I've gone beyond penny pinching. I think I might be... Time long have departed. Those with forbidden power over the dead were branded as wretched bone racers. Such heathens were hunted, hanged, burnt, and staked, and their remains sealed within sanctified mausoleums. But what the fearful and foolish folk did not realize is that those who are already dead cannot be killed. Thou art one such reviled bone racer. Now rise it from thy grave, but tread carefully, as the godly heroic forces come to hunt and slay thee once more. Fetch their bones and amass a legion of dead and demon, for the king of this domain crusades to demand thy head. Can thou resist King Giggle's poundings? Wait, resist his what? Hey yo, what the f Hey guys, Ender Herf here, and on today's episode of Pixel Pinching, we're gonna be talking about Bone Razor Minions. The first, and definitely not the last, vampire survivor-like slash roguelike slash bullet heaven game that we're gonna be talking about on this series. Vampire survivor-like games are a prime bait for pixel pinching, as they are usually always under $10. With that in mind, I'll try not to showcase too many, and just showcase what I think are some of the best ones out of the genre. Bone Razor Minions is a game where you amass an army of undead to defeat the waves of heroes who are trying to kill you. With its retro style graphics and banging chiptune OST, this game looks and sounds a lot like Vampire Survivors. However, gameplay wise, it is very different. And when I say banging chiptune OST, I really mean it. Like, I may not be old enough to really appreciate some good like retro style music, but I can recognize a banger when I hear it. And this game, it's got some bangers. Like. Or this one. And this one. You already know when the game has a jukebox built in with the OST, the OST is fine. Anyways, as I was saying, though this game may look and sound like Vampire Survivors, I don't think it plays the same at all. In Vampire Survivors, you have to move away from and towards enemies because you are the thing that's attacking them, and at the same time they're the thing attacking you, so you can get swarmed very easily, or you can just clear the wave very easily. In this game, your minions are attacking for you, so you're actually going to be spending more time avoiding and trying to stay away from enemies than going towards them. That may sound easier, which I guess it is, but at the same time, the maps do have boundaries in this game, so you can't just run away forever. In this game, you also have access to a chargeable dash, which can help you also move around and dodge enemies. As you slay enemies, they drop bones, and the bones are what you need to bone raise minions. Yeah, I know, crazy talk, right? Elite enemies will drop hero souls, which are used to upgrade your minions to a different tier or get specific higher tier minions. And you also get access to some spells that you could use during your run. Everything else is the same as any other survivor-like game. You get like relics that are just passive buffs, and your goal is to just survive until you beat the final boss. I raised this game so highly in the survivor-like genre because of how much there is to this game. There are 17 different characters in this game. Each of a completely different skill tree and unique playstyle. There's also a bunch of relics, a bunch of spells, and of course a bunch of minions to raise during your run. And it's not just one type of minion. There are several classifications of minions that each have unique properties and effects when they are in your army. 
Of course some minions are better than others, but the game encourages you to use them all by having certain characters specialize in certain types of minions. And if you ever feel like the pool is just way too much, like there's way too many relics, way too many minions, way too many spells, like some are just garbage compared to others, you have the option to banish it and literally just never see it on your run. And even in the menu, you can super banish something and it will just never show up again like in any run. Also, whenever choosing from a spell, relic, or minion, you are given the option to seal or re-roll it. So sealing will just keep it for the next time you level up or get a uh, option. And re-rolling it will obviously like give you a bunch of new options. So if you're looking for those really strong minions or really strong relics, it's not that hard despite having such a large amount of things that you can pick from. Also, you can actually upgrade your enemies to make it so that the game lasts longer and you get more rewards, which is actually pretty important if you're trying to beat the game. On top of all of this, there's also 14 different maps. And the maps are customizable with contraptions, which are things that you can purchase in the menu to be put on the map, which can give you different passive bonuses. And if you're sitting here thinking, wow, that's that's a lot of stuff. Well, there's more. You can customize your character with a different color robe or a different color head. I know that's not crazy, but like in a little 2D game like this, a little pixelated game like this, it can go a long way. There's a built-in card game in this game, which is a little bit hard to understand, but eventually you'll get it as well as two other game modes that are more like the survivor like style one being a choose your own adventure type quest and the other being like more similar to like an endless mode where you see how much points you can score before you get ultimately killed and finally there's also weekly challenges and just a scoreboard for every mode so if you're really trying to like climb the leaderboard i wasn't really interested but you know you can. As somewhat of a completionist, having 192 achievements to achieve was also such a great thing to me. Because not only are there a lot of achievements, but they're not that hard to achieve. It's like mostly like doing different things on different characters, and maybe a couple hard ones, but not impossible, you know? Of course, I do have all 192 achievements, um, not to, uh, you know, flex or toot my own horn here, but more to show that I enjoyed the content of the game so much that I actually went out and got all 192 achievements. These games kind of play like idle games in a sense, where, yes, you do have to focus a little bit on dodging and running around, but like, if you get strong enough, you really can just stand still and just let the game do the work. A fully upgraded run will take about 18 minutes, which, again, isn't that long and pretty chill. But there is a lot of stuff to collect, and you do need to collect all these things for 100%ing the game. But that's fine because you don't have to 100% the game. You can play the game however you want to play the game. And it's not like the game is too punishing when you don't have everything unlocked. Once I got better at the game, I was able to just beat it without any skill tree upgrades or without any hero upgrades. I think my one complaint about this game would be a complaint that could be true for all survival-like games. Sometimes it's hard to see where you're at and what's going on because of the sheer amount of enemies or projectiles on the screen. They do have a way to highlight your character and highlight like your character, your minions in like different colors and also like enemy bullets and enemies to kind of help you with that, but it can still be hard to really like see what's going on. But stuff like that just comes with the genre, so it's not really like a big deal. Also, as you can probably tell from the intro, this game uses some weird, like, old English slash, like, trolley language. Talking about, like, pounding the king or pounding the queen respectfully, of course. Or, like, raising boners. So, <laughs> you can turn that off. There's actually a setting in the game to turn that off. But it's a little bit quirky, you know? Like, it's got, like, your max amount of coins is, like, 69, 69, 69. Max amount of hero souls, 69. I'm not saying I'm a freak or whatever, and I'm saying I enjoy this, but, you know, I'm just saying that, like, <laughs> that might be a deterrent for you, but you can turn it off. So if you're like me and you like necromancy or, like, summoners in games, I think this game is perfect for you. For $5, you can really get hours upon hours worth of content. As far as Vampire Survivor games go, I would probably rate this as my favorite one, or maybe tied with another one that we'll be talking about soon. But yeah, that's gonna be all for this review. Bone Razor Minions, really cool, cheap game that you can pick up, play, maybe complete it to the fullest, maybe not, but guaranteed fun regardless. And yeah, if you enjoy these types of games, I recommend it heavily. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you want. And if you do pick up this game, try not to get pounded by King Giggled.